and welcome back to Love Your Food. This week we are doing a sort of a take on Oysters Rockefeller, but we're doing it in ramekin. So if you have access to oysters not in shell, this is a great way to do a really interesting oyster dish um, that uh, is pretty simple and absolutely delicious. So uh, we're going to get started here by showing you our ingredients. So we have some already shucked oysters. We have some uh, panko breadcrumbs. We're going to use a little bit of cheese. We're just using cheddar for this. Some baby spinach. Some oyster mushrooms. We've got a little bit of tarragon and some flat leaf parsley. You can use uh, curled as well. Some garlic and some shallot. Some heavy cream. And just a little tiny bit of uh, vermouth. And this is just plain dry vermouth. So we're going to start off with our mise en place so that everything's ready to go because once this one starts cooking, it actually goes really, really fast. So the first thing we're going to do is grate our cheese when this is just going to be to cover the top once, uh, once it comes out of the oven or once it goes into the oven. Next, we're going to get our spinach ready. You want to make sure you go through and pull out any leaves that uh, aren't exactly great like those. And we are just going to give these a little cut. We want little tiny pieces of spinach throughout the dish. We, we don't want to have uh, big whole leaves of spinach. And I know when you cook spinach, it does reduce quite a lot, but we still want to keep this uh, in pretty small pieces. So and take out any stems that you want. We're just going to set that aside. Again, this is uh, going to go into the pan and cook down with everything else. And we're going to do the same with our flat leaf parsley. So we're just going to cut uh, most of it. We're going to cut most of it off of the stems here. And this is going to go in. We are going to reserve some of it for later. We're going to chop it up with the tarragon to add right at the end of the cooking to give it a little bit more of a fresh parsley uh, aroma just before we put it in the oven with the, uh, with the cheese on top. So once your parsley is chopped nicely. And again, just a chiffonade is fine. That's going to go into uh, just onto our plate to, uh, to be ready. We're going to cut the shallot nice and small as well. So thin slices. And then we're just going to chop that into a pretty fine dice. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is all going to cook together. So uh, you can have a little bit different size. You just want it uh, good and fine so that it uh, again spreads really nicely through the whole dish. I'm just going to set that aside. And the same with our garlic. Again, very, very small pieces of the garlic. And uh, we're just going to cut that uh, into really, really thin uh, sheets and then uh, cut it into very thin matchsticks and then dice it from there. And there we go. So there's our garlic and that's just going to go onto the plate with everything else. And then once you have all of your mise en place done, it is time to start cooking. Last thing is our mushrooms, and we just want to cut these into reasonably sized pieces. They might look a little big here, but we're going to cook these before we add all the other ingredients. So they are going to shrink quite a lot. Now, oyster mushrooms do have quite a lot of um, water in them, so when you cook them, they shrink significantly. So we're just going to sort of give these a rough chop. And then these are going to go into the pan first with a little bit of butter. And uh, if you want, you can also add a little bit of neutral oil as well, just to keep everything from burning. And we're just gonna toss all of those mushrooms in there. Now the, we're using black oyster mushrooms. You can use whatever uh, uh, oyster mushrooms you like, or even shiitake or anything like that. Just something with a little bit of interesting flavor and texture. A little sprinkle of salt on there, as well as a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper. And we're just going to let this cook. We want a little bit of color on these, and we want to uh, make sure that they cook down quite a lot. So you can see here, they have shrunk down a lot. They've really gotten very, very small, um, and there's uh, lots more room in our pan now. You can see a little bit of color on some of those pieces. That's really, really nice, that great uh, Maillard reaction. So we've got that nice brown sear on there. And now we're going to add all of our uh, other ingredients. So in goes the 
parsley and uh, spinach. In goes the shallot and garlic. And if you want to give the garlic and shallot a little bit more time to cook, you can add it first and just let them uh, wilt a little bit and become translucent before you add your uh, spinach. But it's not necessary. You can add it all at the same time if you like. It just means that in the final result, the garlic and the shallot might end up a little sharper. Then we're just going to add our cream. And you can see it's a really hot pan right now. The cream just starts boiling right away. And we're just going to let this cook down together. So all of these things are going to cook together. The flavors are going to marry really, really nicely. And we want to reduce that cream by quite a bit. We want it to get uh, a lot thicker than it is right now. As you can see right now, it's completely liquid and um, everything looks very, very fresh, which is lovely, but uh, we're going to be adding a little bit more fresh herb later. So don't worry when they start to wilt in that, uh, in that pan. So here we are, we're going to take the uh, uh, tarragon leaves off the stems and the same with the remainder of our flat leaf parsley. And then once we've done all of that, again, just a nice little uh, chiffonade, and then we're going to uh, chop this pretty fine. Uh, it's going to go in uh, just before we put this into the ramekins uh, and into the oven. So it gives it just that slightly layered uh, flavor, a little bit of bright, fresh green uh, uh, aroma in there. Meanwhile, everything in here is cooking down. Now here you need to uh, just keep an eye on everything very, very closely at this point. You don't want anything to burn or scorch. So keep an eye on here. The, uh, the cream is starting to reduce. You can see it's starting to thicken quite a lot. So now's a great time to add our oysters. And we're going to add the oysters as well as their liquor. And that gives it that beautiful seafoody flavor, that, uh, that sort of aroma of the ocean, which uh, is really, really fantastic. These are smaller oysters. We like to do this with smaller oysters because then you can have a few in your, uh, in your ramekin. A little dash of the vermouth uh, to your taste. We're going to add a little bit more. And we're just going to let these cook uh, in the uh, cream sauce here. Now in real oysters, Rockefeller, it is um, actually a bechamel sauce, typically, like a, like a white sauce. And we're just doing a kind of a, a, a quick version of that by reducing the cream. So once the edges of the uh, oysters start to curl up, that means they're starting to get cooked. We don't want to cook them all the way through because this is going in the oven still. So once they start to curl up at the corners and it's, uh, they're, they're still pretty tender, they're, they're very soft in the middle, we're going to add those breadcrumbs and the remainder of the, um, the chopped herbs that we just did. And then we're going to just pop these right into the ramekins. So uh, best idea here is to start with uh, the oysters and distribute them evenly. Trying not to make uh, too much of a mess here. And uh, after you've distributed the oysters evenly, then you can put the rest of the sauce in uh, and uh, distribute that as evenly as you can. Now we did end up getting a little bit on our parchment there. We're going to put these on a baking sheet and these are going to go into the oven on the baking sheet. It just it helps to make sure that they don't spill over. We added just a little dash of lemon juice on each one of these just to brighten them up a little bit. We were disappointed. Our, uh, we didn't have any fresh lemon, so we had to use the, uh, the bottled stuff. But a uh, little dash of that lemon juice. Uh, on goes the remainder of our breadcrumbs. And then just a little bit of cheese on top. So we're just going to top those with the cheese to let that get nice and melted and a little bit brown as well. And then once we've done that, this is going to go straight into the oven. So um, you want to make sure, obviously, that your oven is preheated. Because uh, this needs to go in right now. The... Oysters are still cooking. That sauce is still very hot, and we do want to uh, just add a little bit more heat to this to uh, to get that cheese melted and finish cooking the oysters. So in that goes. We're going to just give it a quick check. The cooking times and amounts are going to be in the description below. So the cheese has started to melt, but we don't have any of that browning yet, so we're just going to pop that under the broiler for a little while. 
and then we get this beautiful result. Now you can see these are extremely hot. Please, please do not try to eat this while the sauce is still bubbling. They are unbelievably hot right now. So we're just going to let that cool down a little bit. And uh, once it's uh, cool enough to eat, that's when you can dig in. And uh, uh, it's a fantastic dish. It's a great side dish. Those oysters, um, we got these beautiful fresh oysters that were already shucked. Um, and absolutely delicious in this it's uh it's it's a really fun little side dish uh, that can go you can make this as part of a surf and turf sort of dinner uh anything like that and uh, we hope you'll give it a try if you like this recipe please do like and subscribe and if you have any recipes you'd like to see chef caleb try on the channel please let us know in the comments below and remember to love your food mm -hmm.